let's do a quick example with regression trees in code. So this is available as a uh, skeleton. It's a tree regression dash skel in your Git repository. Uh, I've added uh, in particular uh, this little bit here. So ring in decision tree regressor and um, we're also going to be exporting uh, uh, to, uh, to GraphViz. We'll, we'll talk about that. So bring that in. Uh, we're going to be working with that same data set that we, we were with our support vector regression side of things. And we're, as part of that, we're doing some, some uh, plotting in 3D. So this function came right over from that work. And here's our, our data set. So just as a reminder, let's look at what that data set is. So this is the, uh, the shape here. What we're going to do is uh, learn a set of different uh, tree regression models to try to capture the shape of this, uh, of this uh, surface. The decision tree regressor class has a variety of different uh, regularization parameters. Uh, to start with, let's uh, just set our max depth to something. I'm going to say uh, two. Uh, so what that means is we can have at most two question nodes along any one of the paths. And then once we've created that, we'll go ahead and fit the data set. And, and here we're using our entire data set. We're not worried about doing a validation set right now. And there we go. So we've now fit our data. Let's look at what predictions our model will produce given that those inputs. And now let's look at the surface that we get back from this. So we're doing a plot 3D of our ins and our predictions. And there we go. So our, with our max depth of uh, two, we can capture a very simple piecewise constant function. So there's one surface here, there's a surface uh, sitting out over here, and a uh, surface here, and then in the background there's a, another surface uh, sitting uh, out there. And, and with, with a max depth set at two, we expect to uh, be able to capture only four different possibilities. Two, two squared is, is uh, four different constant values. For fun, what I'm going to do is uh, follow along with the book and export the graph that we've learned. And at the time that I'm recording this, you don't have it installed on your server yet, but uh, hopefully we'll have uh, a dot ready to go here by the time you're starting to play with this code. So for this, we, we handed a file, uh, a model, a file. I'm just going to call it model.dot. Dot is just a, it, it's in and of itself, it's a programming language for expressing graph structures. And, and it's a, quite actually a very flexible kind of uh, package. I suggest you take a look at, at the details there. Uh, but this export graph is will actually take our model, our decision tree model, and generate uh, a graph description in this dot language. Give it a couple of other parameters. And there we go. So now sitting in our uh, file system in the, in the local directory is a file called model.out. And let me show you how to get to that. Uh, when you go to create notebooks, you, you come into this menu here, into the launcher menu. You can also select the, the, a terminal. And this happens to be not on the server right now. This is on my local uh, laptop. So, so I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to change my directory uh, to get over to uh, where all of this is stored. OK, so there's, uh, there's my, uh, my working directory. And within that, it has this file model dot dot. We can, it's actually a readable language, so more the more program at the command line, 
will actually just print out the contents of the, the file here. And you can you can see that it's a it's an, a relatively readable uh, uh, language. If if you sit down, you can actually work through where the nodes are, where the edges are, uh, etc. So the program that should be installed soon uh, is called dot and what it will do is it will translate this dot formatted uh, file to a variety of different file formats. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and bring up, uh, do the conversion over to a PNG file, it's an image file format. And that'll make it easy for us to visualize within the browser, uh, but you can export out to a variety of other things, including PDF, uh, and encapsulated postscript and, and both of those make it easy to take your graph and say include it into uh, a paper uh, So dash big T PNG says we're generating a, a PNG file. We have to give it to our model dot dot and We also have to tell it what it's outputting to and I'm going to say model dot PNG So it, it completed without any errors and now if we go back over to the launcher, what you'll notice is uh, you can see there's our model dot dot file that was generated, but now there's also a, a model dot png. So we can load that up and, and there is the graph. So there are two uh, different layers of, uh, of question nodes. So, there, so the root node isn't explicitly shown here. Uh, this is a question node about feature one and uh, where it is relative to 1.445. Uh, this is the, the MSC, the mean squared error associated with this particular node, how many samples we have. Uh, and this is the value. If this node were a, a uh, leaf node, this is the value that would be output. And, and then each of the branches from this node, uh, for true and for false, that takes us down to another uh, question. Uh, this time in both cases, it's about x0, uh, so, the, so feature 0, and where it is relative to this 1.55 value. It's interesting that we've got the same uh, cutoff uh, for both of these, but that's not generally the case. Mean squared error, number of samples that have fallen down. You'll notice there's an asymmetry here. We have 450 samples here, and the remaining 1050 samples over here. But you can see now that these two nodes, if these happen to have been our leaf nodes, uh, they have very different values that they would be generating. The, the true and the false branches aren't shown uh, for some reason at this lower level, uh, but the last row here, these are our uh, leaf nodes. And you'll notice that the value that's being output from each of those leaf nodes, so those are diff quite different from one another. These, these two are very similar, uh, but the other two are, are quite different. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out and go back to our tree regression. So that was a, a depth of two. What can we do with a, uh, a depth of three? Oops, I'm sorry, I am working in the wrong. Let's, let's back that up. I, I was working in the wrong workspace. Okay, so let, let's go back to our uh, code here. And instead of a depth of two, let's go over to a depth of three and fit the data there. Notice it comes back uh, relatively quickly. And, uh, and now let's predict and plot. And you'll notice now that we have more gradations. Uh, so if we count up these, the number of surfaces here, we should have two to the three. Uh, so there are a total of eight of these surfaces. Uh, there's at least one in, in the background here. I'm going to go ahead and export a new dot file and then head on over to my terminal and re-execute the dot program. And let's load that back up so we can look at it. And you'll notice now we have a, a, a more complex tree. Instead of two layers, we now have uh, three layers. And uh, there are, are our uh, our leaf nodes down here, again, to, to the eight of, of those. So, so with this particular decision tree, we can capture some trends. Oops, I keep 
sorry, let me go back to the right workspace here. So with this particular decision tree, even though it's starting to look a little bit complex, we're still only vaguely capturing the shape of the uh, data that we really care about. So let's, uh, let's shift over to, uh, say, a max depth of 10. So this is a quite a bit bigger de decision tree. And there's the surface that we're able to uh, capture. Uh, notice that we're essentially capturing a uh, constant value uh, at, the, at the peaks and the troughs of this function. It's getting cut off a little bit over here uh, as well. I can go about exporting this out to the graph. I can show you what that looks like. Oh, uh, so it's now complaining that the graph is too big, uh, but it did make an attempt at uh, rendering it. It does, did some extra scaling there. And so there is the, uh, the graph, and you can see it's a really complicated graph now. So there are a tremendous number of nodes here. But that's fun nonetheless. OK, so I'm going to close out the model and go back to our code. So, so max depth, as we talked about, is, is one uh, particular regularization parameter. It's not necessarily uh, the best type of parameter. So let's, let's try, instead of max depth, let's set max leaf nodes. And I'll say, let's use uh, 10 for now. So, so remember, that with our uh, max depth, we, we're, we're generally going to end up with a, ba a balanced tree unless we don't have very much data. And, and now, with, by setting max leaf nodes in this way, what we're going to allow the algorithm to do is uh, achieve a, a balance so that uh, it can really allocate uh, nodes to places where the function is changing a lot, and then nodes where the function isn't changing very much, it can just use a single leaf node to represent that. So we've uh, fit the model now, and let's look at what we end up with. So with, with a max leaf set at 10, there are going to be necessarily 10 of these piece, piecewise constant regions. And, and you'll notice that the distribution is quite different than the cases that we were looking at where we were specifying the maximum depth. I'm going to go ahead and export that graph out and convert it. And now we can view it. And, and there we go. So, so there's our tree and it doesn't quite all fit on my screen anymore. But what you'll notice is that we've got a bunch of nodes that are sitting here at depth three, leaf nodes, that is. Uh, but there's one particular sub-branch where, where we actually go down another uh, three different questions, actually another two different, sorry, three different questions, and then the associated leaf nodes. So, so we've, we've changed the balance. Uh, a bit there. So for fun, let's increase, let's double the number of leaf nodes that we're allowed. And there's the function there. And now with, with this particular choice, you can kind of squint and start to see uh, the original shape. Export that back out to Graphis and do the conversion to PNG. We'll load that up, and and we're we're going to end up starting to get to a point uh, where at least with these default parameters uh, for uh, dot, it's going to be harder and harder to actually visualize these things. Um, but there's one layer, and now I'm panning down toward the uh, to now at the bottom, you know, and you'll see that we've got this one branch here that is uh, that is still uh, a bit deeper than everybody else. It's interesting still that these first two splits are based on the zero feature and the thresholds are the same. Okay, so let's just for fun, let's uh, double this again and look at what we're able to do. And, and we're, we're starting to 
get the that shape there. And I'm now going to be a bit more ridiculous as far as number of leaf nodes. And, and when we do that, you can see that we're now getting down to a point where the, the gradations are, are small enough to where we're doing a reasonable job of reconstructing that 3D surface that, we, uh, that, that we're uh, training on. All right, so that's a, a quick demo of uh, doing tree-based uh, regression. Uh, we'll, we'll play a little bit with this uh, in one of our uh, upcoming uh, homework assignments.